So what kind of printer do I need so I can start printing 3D printed crowns in my practice? Hey, I'm Dr. Chris Griffin, founder of the 3D Printing Association for Dentists, and this is the video series that lets dentists start 3D printing in their practice. And hey guys, just take a minute and subscribe to this channel. Give us a thumbs up if you get a chance, and this will give you a better op you know, opportunity to get the updates and stuff as they come out, because I don't want you guys to miss a minute of this as 3D printing bursts onto the scene in general dentistry. So what kind of printer do I need if I want to start 3D printing crowns in my practice? This is a question we get all the time here at the association. And we've been 3D printing crowns in my practice for a long time, basically since they, since they came out. So, so let's go over your different options, okay? So until January 1st of this year, basically there were permanent 3D printed crown resins on the market. And, and you know, we use some and we've done some and they were considered permanent, you know, I'm using air quotes here, um, but they were predominantly resin based, okay? And so one of the resins that came out first, uh, this little bottle here, uh, if you're familiar with resins, 3D printed resins, you'll know this bottle's a little bit smaller than like the model resin bottles there. And it's also more expensive, right? So, so this is what came out first. It's a company called uh, Farseo Bago, and it, it was a resin, it's a real good resin. Um, it's supposed to be permanent. I would say at this point in time, it's more for, it's more for like long-term temporaries or just regular temporaries in your practice. Um, and so the printers you need to print that for temporaries, long-term temporaries, uh, or air quotes, permanent crowns, that would be, you could pretty much print that with anything, a Sprint Ray 95 or a Sprint Ray 55. Uh, there's several other companies that allow you to print that resin, and that's what you need for that. It's just, just, just a basic thing, right? Uh, in our practice, we actually still use this resin quite a bit. We actually use this resin for, like I said, temporary. So a lot of times in my practice, we will have the temporary pre-made now. And by the way, guys, the old workflow where you know you sit, the patient comes in, you take a, a, a polyvinyl impression of the quadrant you're working on, you use that as a negative impression to have them bite down on some sort of acrylic temporary material, take it out, polish it chair side, glue it back on. I mean, I think those days are really numbered. They're over for me, and uh, we're training dentists every day on how to not do that anymore. So now I think really your best option is either do same day crowns, which have been around with Cyric for a while, and now they're available with 3D printing, or if you still like your lab and you still like zirconia, that's great. We still send off a good bit of zirconia. And so when we temporize a patient now, all we do is at the appointment where we uh, diagnose it, we have a couple of scanners in the office. We just pop out a scan, an upper and lower and a bite, uh, send those to our, you know, 3D design person in the office, which is a former clinical assistant, you know, so you can make one of your assistants into this type of person in your practice too. It's really, uh, it's a very, it, it's very synergistic with what they're used to doing, you know, and so they design it, pre-make the temporary as a shell temp, you know, so it's almost like one of those pedo chrome crowns, except it's, it's a little bit thicker and it's made out of this permanent crown resin, air quotes, permanent crown resin. And so when the patient comes in now, all I have to do is prep, and then we scan, and then we just pop on the shell temp and usually cement it with a resin-based temporary cement, which sort of everything bonds together. So now you've got a really nice temporary that's already pre-made. And you, you gain, in my practice, we gain at least one hour of chair side assistant time during the day from them just not having to do that process. Because I didn't do, I haven't done it for a long time. My assistants would make the chair side temps and now, they just have to pop on and cement the temp, and it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a lifesaver in a busy practice, okay? So that's what you need to print that. Okay, but these new resins that have come out that, uh, you know, they're more ceramic than they are resin, uh, then those are the ones that qualify uh, under the new CDT ADA code change January 1st. They took out a lot of the old verbiage about what makes, uh, you know, an all porcelain crown, an all porcelain crown. So now as long as the material is predominantly ceramic based, which 
uh, as long as the is what from what I've been told, as long as the ceramic, uh, as long as the resin you're using has more ceramic in it than resin, which uh, that's a neat trick, right? I didn't know that was even possible, but that's a neat trick. If it's got more than 50% ceramic filler, now it's uh, technically an APC or an all porcelain crown. So that's great. So now we have some new resins that have come on the market to take advantage of that new new rule. Okay, so so what can we do there? So I'm a you know I speak a lot for Sprint Ray and stuff, and so I love Sprint Ray as you can see a lot of Sprint Rays. But there is a less expensive option that there's a resin that you can print with a less expensive option if you want to. So there's this resin here uh, called Rodan Sculpture. Now it's a very nice resin. It's it was really one of the first resins, if not the first resin in the U.S. market that actually had. Uh, the predominant amount of ceramic filler. So yeah, that that one is great. Now that one doesn't print on a sprint ray right now, at least. And so we had to find a way to print that. Well, uh, you know, shout out to uh, Dr. Rick Ferguson's Facebook group, and you know that's where I learned about this resin. And so we bought a printer, you know, very inexpensive printer from a company called Frozen, P H R O Z E N. Um, and so we we were able to print this resin on that printer. And, uh, and then cure it, we didn't have a curing unit from Frozen, um, you know, I got some information from that same Facebook group that, that you could get a validated cure on this resin from either an Odo Flash, which we actually have an Odo Flash because the first 3D printer I ever bought was, um, the company's now Desktop Health, but uh, the company before them, I forget the name of the company, that's who we bought it from. So we have the Odo Flash in the office. You also can, uh, can cure that resin with the right uh, wavelength of just a handheld light cure. So there's a lot of ways to cure something as small as a crown, right? So we were able to print it, cure it in that, um, and that was good. But then Sprint Ray came out with their new resin called Ceramic Crown, right? All these bottles are tiny and you know very expensive. So Ceramic Crown now is something that can be printed by the Sprint Ray printers. But as you know, you know how companies are. So of course, it couldn't be the old, plain old 95 or 55. So they had to come out with new printers. So the, the printers that will print the new Sprint Ray ceramic crown material are the 95S and the 55S. Both of those printers will print it straight out of the box. Also, if you want to use less, less of the resin and you want to uh, you know, print faster, they have, a, they have a build plate that they will send you for a price that's smaller uh, they call this a crown kit, the smaller build plate, um, and some other cool things in the crown kit. But now you can do this uh, with that material. It's very fast, and these new crowns, you know, you can you can get a lot of crowns out of a bottle of resin. Um, so it's you know it's very inexpensive. The total cost per crown is very low. So I would suggest at this point in time, and I'm making this video in April 2023. If it were me starting all over, I would go ahead and I would get like a Sprint Ray 95S because that will print the crowns. It also gives you a greater volume if you're doing ortho in your office, doing a lot of models, night guards, dentures, surgical guides. This will print all that stuff. The 55S will do it all as well, but you're going to be slower and you're going to be limited on how big of your, of your build plate is and how much that you can actually do at a time. So yeah, so as of today, I'm gonna to recommend the Sprint Ray 95S, but you can do it on the 95S or the 55S, and you can also go the less expensive route if you don't mind jumping through some hurdles, and you can get uh, the Rodan resin and use the frozen printer. Okay, uh, so yeah, there we go. That's, that's how you print a crown in today's practice. Those are the printers I recommend as of today. So let's go guys, let's start printing crowns in our practice and let's give the independent practice owner an option to remain more autonomous as lab work gets more and more crazy and more and more pressures are, are on us as far as PPOs and stuff. This gives us a great option to keep things sustainable for our practices. All right guys, we'll see you next time.